We'll begin in just a few seconds as we let everyone come into the room and connect to their audio. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's San Francisco Interfaith Council's weekly online briefing for faith leaders. Today's topic, water conservation in these times of impending drought. The session is hosted by the San Francisco Interfaith Council and supported by the Joint Information Center of the San Francisco COVID Command Center. Some housekeeping for today. Audio, video, and chat will be monitored and recorded for record keeping, training, and quality assurance. By default, all participants will be muted and video turned off to minimize distractions. For chat, to submit a question or comment, select the chat button at the bottom of your screen and send a message to Q&A. They will be shared with the speakers and panelists after the meeting for a response. Thank you. Get tested San Francisco. You can save lives and stop the spread of COVID-19 by getting tested through your healthcare provider. If you don't have health insurance or can't get tested through your provider, visit sf.gov slash get tested SF or call 311 for information on getting tested at a city run testing location. A safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine coupled with continued preventative measures are our best tools to end the COVID-19 pandemic and safely reopen San Francisco. Go to sf.gov slash COVID vaccine for information on eligibility, vaccination sites, including locations, and links to book appointments if available. Now is the time to come together, San Francisco. We've been through so much in the last year. Together, we can stop Asian discrimination, bias, hate, and violence. The COVID-19 virus has no race or nationality. It is simply a disease. To report a hate crime, please contact the San Francisco Police Department at 415-553-1133. And a special note that the San Francisco Interfaith Council is a sponsor of this program. And now at this time, I'd like to hand the floor over to the Executive Director of the San Francisco Interfaith Council, Michael Pappas. Michael, the floor is yours. Elisa, thank you so much. And Thank you to yourself, John McKnight, and all of our friends at the COVID Command Center's Joint Information Center Virtual Outreach Team. I woke up today and realized that uh, this is our 50th briefing that has been produced. Without the platform and the staff and your expertise, we would not be able to be imparting the information that is allowing our constituents to make uh, critical and timely decisions on behalf of those who have been entrusted to their spiritual care. Um, with that, good morning, I'm Michael Pappas, and on behalf of the San Francisco Interfaith Council, I wanna welcome you to this week's online briefing for faith leaders. With impending drought at our doorstep, the severity of this environmental wake-up call should be a reminder to us all to be as water efficient as possible. This week's online briefing for faith leaders hosted by the San Francisco Interfaith Council and supported by the COVID Command Center's Joint Information Center Virtual Outreach Team welcomes as our featured presenter, Julie Ortiz, manager of the San Francisco Public Utility Commission's Retail Water Conservation Program. Julie will provide us an overview of drought and local water supply conditions and actions the PUC is taking and asking its customers to follow to help stretch our water supplies as we enter a second dry year. She will also review key water saving strategies people can take in their homes and businesses and free water conservation assistance and resources the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission provides. Without further ado, I'd like to ask Rita Simmel, the past chair and founder of the San Francisco Interfaith Council to will open us up and offer a welcome and read the interfaith statement read at every interfaith gathering. Rita, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this most important conversation. And it's, it, 
as we are all living through very trying and dangerous times. I'm so pleased that we have some wonderful friends with us and it's so good to see Susan Leal. I say hello to her, but all to all of you. I'd like to read this statement now. This is an interfaith community. Whatever our individual belief, it can be freely expressed here with no apologies. If we are invited to offer a prayer in this setting, it should be offered according to the tradition with which we identify. If we are invited to speak on a subject from the perspective of our, of our tradition, we are free to do so without fear of offending those who come from another tradition. We come together as people of faith to learn from each other that we might better understand the multiplicity of faith traditions in our city and in our world. Welcome everyone. Thank you, Rita. I feel like we are very blessed today to have with us offering uh, this morning's reflective moment, Andrew Galvin, who is the curator of Old Mission Dolores uh, and is a member of the indigenous Ohlone peoples. Uh, in, in his presence, we are reminded that uh, we walk upon Ohlone land, we drink Ohlone water, and the Ohlone people have a great reverence uh, for, for the environment and stewardship of that environment. So in light of today's topic, I've invited Andy to uh, offer the reflective moment. Andy, thank you for being with us. Horshe Tuhi Kana Rakat Andrew Galvin. My name is Andrew Galvin. I am an Ohlone man, indigenous to the San Francisco Bay region. And I am pleased to be here with you this morning to offer this reflection. When one considers the natural environment of the San Francisco Bay region, one must consider water. Not to consider water is not to have an understanding of the San Francisco Bay environment. Many of you know the city and county of San Francisco geographically. But let me point out to you the locations of four villages that are documented where my Ohlone ancestors were living at the time of contact in 1769. The largest village was what we know today is Dolores Park, the village of Chichui. There were approximately 60 people living there. And that's why Mission Dolores was established near that village. We know that over on the coast at Chrissy Field was a village, Pelumac. We know down where the Mission Creek enters into the bay, Sililtac. And we know downtown San Francisco, some of you who go shopping in the financial districts, as well as in the area of Bloomingdale's and Jesse Street, that is Yalamu. The earliest written historical accounts of the San Francisco Bay was penned by Father Fran Francisco, no, I'm sorry, Franciscan Father Pedro Font, who wrote as he observed the San Francisco Bay from what today we call Sweeney Point, looking down towards the airport. I do believe that if this area could be well populated, it would rival any city of Europe. Boy, what a forecast, huh? But one of the best hypothetical descriptions of the San Francisco Bay Area 250 years ago was written by Malcolm Mark Rowland in a book that many of you may know, The Ohlone Way. And I quote him here for this description, concerning my ancestors, and the life of our San Francisco Bay. One harvest followed another in a great yearly cycle. There were trips to the seashore for shellfish, to the rivers for salmon, to the marshes for ducks and geese, to the oak groves for acorn, to the hills and meadows for seeds, roots, and greens 
to quarries for minerals and stones and other trips for milkweed, fiber, hemp, basket materials, tobacco, and medicine. The series of ripening and harvesting divided the year into different periods, and it gave a lonely life its characteristic rhythm. All of this depended on life-giving water. Let us pray this morning using the words of who our city is named for, St. Francis of Assisi. Praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother's son. Praise be you through Sister Moon and the stars. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Wind. Through the heavens, clearly and serene, and through every kind of weather. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water. She is very useful, humble, precious, and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through our Sister Mother Earth. Kish Horshe Ek Hinan. My heart is good. Thank you. Thank you, Andy, for grounding us in this reflective moment uh, in, in a tradition which we all revere because it is the tradition of the people who first populated this land. It is an incredible privilege today to welcome Julie Ortiz, Water Conservation Manager for the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Julie, I have to tell you the genesis of uh, this program, and I did not realize at the time that we booked it uh, that it was going to command front page uh, coverage in the Chronicle twice in this past week, but I recently moved to Marin County and I picked up the paper a couple of weeks ago and, and, and unlike San Francisco, our water here in Marin is dependent on reservoirs and we are at a, uh, we are at a dangerous level here, at, I think that 57% and, and not encouraging outlook for the future. Uh, and so you know, I, I thought that we really needed to discuss this. And then literally a week later, I picked up the paper and on the front page, uh, the governor had uh, announced that 39 more counties uh, had declared a drought emergency, which brings that number up to 41 counties of, San Fran uh, of California's 58 counties. And then just this morning, and I'm listening to Andy's uh, reflection about the wildlife, the danger now that salmon are uh, put in uh, just by the drought itself. Uh, I, I wanna thank you for, for coming on board today and, and really sensitizing us not only to, uh, to the level of danger that we are in, but also giving us some things that we can do as stewards of this, uh, of this place uh, to conserve water. And with that, I'm going to hand the floor over to you and I'm gonna put myself on mute. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I am absolutely honored to have been invited to speak today and um, uh, really appreciate the warm welcome and the wonderful introduction. Um, so I am going to provide an overview of the SFPUC's water supply, our response to drought conditions, ways San Francisco residents and others outside San Francisco and businesses can save water and how we can help. Um, next slide, please. So first, just a little bit about the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. We provide water to 2.7 million people in four Bay Area counties. And through our regional system, we also generate 100% greenhouse gas-free clean hydroelectric power that powers City of San Francisco facilities and the Muni system. And we also run the city's wastewater system. So we're very fortunate to have a strong and diverse mix of supplies. On average, about 85% of our water is from reservoirs in Tuolumne County that's fed by rain and snowmelt from the Sierra Nevada mountains. 
and another 15% is from reservoirs or watersheds in the East Bay and the peninsula. We also use groundwater for drinking purposes and irrigation purposes and recycled water for irrigation and non-potable uses. Uh, next slide, please. So as uh, Michael said, this is a really timely week uh, to be able to come and speak to you. Um, the governor uh, did expand the drought emergency proclamation. So it's now covering 41 out of our state's 58 counties. So that's um, a huge swath and uh, now includes um, many Bay Area counties, although San Francisco, not specifically. So some of you may have seen this map before. This is a California drought um, map. Um, it uh, is often picked up in, re in media coverage. And so what it really does is it's reflecting the amount of precipitation and climatic conditions uh, throughout the state and how those rank historically. Um, it's important to note what it doesn't reflect is water storage. So for example, in San Francisco, and you will see in San Francisco is falling into um, that uh, very red area, uh, which looks scary. Um, uh, but it's important to note that uh, we generally don't rely on rainfall for our drinking water supply in San Francisco, and we generally never have rain after March. So we're always at this point relying on storage. Uh, so generally, um, when this map appears pretty much any summer month, uh, it's going to look a little bit like this. But the importance of it is that state officials use this map along with state reservoir levels to drive policy. And that really, you know, looking at these climatic conditions and the reservoir levels across the state is really what drove the governor to declare the drought and expand it. And by doing so, that enables the state to access more funding and regulatory relief to help out communities. So I just wanted to give a little explanation there. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide uh, is showing um, large reservoirs maintained by the California Department of Water Resources across the state. And it's showing the water levels. Um, and as you can see, it's showing uh, their, their per percent of average use as well as their percent of capacity. And it reflects that most of these, and these are very big uh, reservoirs, are well below capacity and below historic average. Uh, so again, this is not specific to San Francisco. Uh, these are the large state uh, reservoirs, but this information again went in along with looking at the rainfall and climate conditions to expanding the emergency declaration. Uh, next slide, please. So water supply levels are really key to how uh, drought conditions affect us. And while we are entering a second dry year and rain and snowpack is down, uh, for the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, um, our total system storage capacity is at about 77% of maximum um, for this time of year. Maximum is uh, normal uh, percent of maximum is about 80%. So we're not too far below that. So overall our water, uh, storage is looking pretty good, but anything we can save now is an insurance policy if next year is also dry. And that helps, as Michael said, helps us stretch our supplies and avoid potential mandatory reductions um, if the drought continues. So we had to give a lot of consideration knowing that shelter at home orders from COVID are just lifting and things are really just beginning to get back uh, to normal and opening. Um, so we were thinking about that, uh, and we don't want to impact economic recovery. Um, so in considering our water storage levels and snow and rainfall levels, we want to start um, it, you know, without really overburdening our customers by asking folks to remain water wise and particularly around outdoor use. So our overall goal is to maintain summertime water use at no more than the 2019 peak summer use. And that's really across our regional system. So we're asking that of our wholesale customers and our wholesale customers are those outside San Francisco and our customers inside San Francisco. Uh, next slide, please. 
So I'm going to show a couple slides here um, that uh, we also make available on our website, and I'll direct you to those. Um, this is showing um, uh, precipitation. The dark black line is the median, and the uh, dark red line is uh, the this year's. And so you can see we are well under median um, precipitation levels, and this is up at our reservoirs in Tuolumne County, our main reservoir is a Hetch Hetchy Reservoir. So it's up in that area. And it's interesting to note uh, the dotted um, light uh, orange line reflects 19, excuse me, blue line reflects 1977. And that was really one of the driest years on record. So we started out this year uh, at that level, which was very worrisome, but uh, we did get a little bit more rainfall, so that's better. And for any of you who are interested in looking at this, uh, this information is posted on our website at sfpuc.org about us, and you can look under the storage and delivery updates. And I'll be following up to send these links, which I think will be distributed out in your newsletter. Um, that location on our website also includes current reservoir storage levels, water delivery by the regions we serve, and some other really interesting data. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide is showing um, where we are with our snowpack um, up in the areas that we measure it uh, in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And it's also showing the dark, the dark black line is the median snowpack and the red dark solid red one is this year. So we're about 70% of our median snowpack. So that is uh, below average. Uh, we're not as low though. The light orange dotted line here is from 2015 when we were in uh, the last very major drought. So we're, we're better than that. So that's some good news. Next slide, please. So we are very fortunate to have multiple sources of water, uh, which makes our system more resilient in dry years. Um, we do have a number of programs uh, citywide to help expand our local supplies, such as using treated recycled water for non-drinking purposes like irrigation, toilet flushing, industrial processing, or street cleaning. And we also blend high quality potable groundwater into our supplies to help stretch them further. Uh, we continue to be very actively planning for additional local water supplies. And of course, uh, we're always uh, focusing on conservation because that just helps lower demand for our water. Next slide, please. So, Conservation really is a way of life in California. And I know uh, we are very uh, lucky here in San Francisco that folks here are committed to water efficiency. Uh, so that's good news. Um, as a water supplier, we have had a comprehensive conservation program, rain or shine, uh, since the 1990s. And that's included financial incentives, assistance, tools, education, and mandates um, to really help our customers be able to use water as efficiently as possible. And through our conservation efforts and everything our customers done, as well as increasingly efficient plumbing codes that require water efficient appliances and plumbing fixtures, all of these have helped to contribute to a very significant water use decline despite population growth. And as this little graphic shows that just since 2005, um, per person water use has decreased 30% um, while uh, population has increased 15%. So that's, that's really you know, quite an accomplishment uh, that we um, really you know, credit to all of our water wise customers and everybody who's helped contribute. So we now uh, have among the state's lowest residential per capita water uses uh, at 42 gallons a day, and that's indoor and outdoor use. And we project that to decrease, but we still have room to save. And that's why I have a job and we still have a program. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, there's a lot going on at the state level uh, as well to uh, promote and require water efficiency. 
Um, the state has been working to increase conservation across California and uh, very actively working to replace a current requirement that was to reduce uh, per person daily usage 20% by 2020 with new, uh, more stringent goals. So uh, the state's now in the process of implementing these new requirements that will become effective in 2023 and they will require all large urban water suppliers like the SFPUC to do even more. So basically each water supplier is going to have its own custom water efficiency target um, that it will need to meet. And it's gonna be based on these four areas, um, an efficiency target for residential indoor use, um, an efficiency target for residential outdoor use, a target for reducing water loss in our own system, meaning in our own pipes and our mains, um, basically reducing um, uh, water loss from breaks and things like that. Um, and then also uh, out, efficient outdoor use among our commercial customers. So those will all be rolled together and uh, uh, come up with a target that will be required to meet. And of course, for us to be able to meet that, which we feel confident we can, we will have to you know, continue to ask our customers and all our water users to be as efficient as possible. Next slide, please. So uh, we also have some permanent conservation requirements uh, in effect locally. And while we really do a lot to encourage people to voluntarily use water wisely, um, we do have some mandates that uh, require it. And it's really to try to minimize waste from leaks, old fixtures and other causes. So we have locally adopted some state requirements uh, that require efficient door and outdoor use in some circumstances. Um, very generally, these do include uh, in all existing properties, um, in homes, residential properties, if they're sold or they do major improvements, uh, they need to replace any old toilets, shower heads, um, or faucets that don't meet current water efficiency code. And in commercial properties, there was a deadline of 2017 to do the same. Uh, for landscapes, uh, there is a requirement that any new landscapes over 500 square feet uh, be designed to meet certain standards of efficiency for irrigation systems and plants. And then ret uh, any existing landscapes that are being retrofitted over 2,500 square feet meet the same. And we have some standing rules uh, to try to minimize water waste. Uh, top among these include waste uh, from irrigation and outdoor washing that results in large amounts of water running down the sidewalk into streets, into storm drains, um, non-recirculating fountains. That means uh, fountains are decorative water features that are just constantly running uh, potable water and using hoses without shutoff nozzles. So those are just a few, um, and we have all of them listed on our website. Next slide, please. So whether you live in a house, an apartment, or have a non-residential property, um, I wanna go through just some core strategies that you can follow to help increase your water efficiency. Uh, first, um, really, analyze your water use. And that might be a little bit easier if you are the customer receiving the water bill. Um, if you are uh, and you're a customer of the SFPUC, you can simply look at your bill or we also have a great online platform, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, but if you don't get your bill, there's still ways to do that. Um, really just taking an assessment of the water using uh, fixtures and appliances in your home and how they're used can be a good start. Making simple changes um, is a great way to just to trim off a little bit of use. Uh, for example, you know, run only full loads in the dishwasher and the clothes washer. Um, if you manage a property with tenants, reminding them to do that or even putting signage up in, in laundry rooms um, if, in case it's not uh, front of mind. Uh, turning off taps uh, when you're washing your hands or brushing your teeth. 
Um, and uh, again, posting signage can be helpful if you have a multifamily apartment or a commercial facility. Fixing plumbing leaks. Um, this is a really big one. And one of the biggest uh, sources of plumbing leaks are toilets. And there's a toilet in every property. So um, uh, well over 50% of the properties that we, we uh, help, um, if they have leaks, it ends up being because of toilets. So there are some simple ways to test for that. And we have a lot of information about that on our website, as well as some um, oftentimes simple fixes to repair those. And those simple fixes uh, can be huge savings. For example, a toilet that's constantly running because um, a small part in it called a flapper needs to be replaced can waste over 900 gallons a day. So just imagine that with that simple fix, you can take care of that a huge amount of waste. Um, replacing old fixtures. So if you have toilets that are over 20 years old or washing machines that are the same age and open from the top and not from the front um, and other appliances, uh, then chances are you can save water by upgrading. And we have rebates and ways to help with that, which I'll talk some more about in a minute. Um, outside, um, just ad adjusting your outdoor use and checking your irrigation system is really important and should be done um, no less than yearly. And certainly um, if you, for folks who don't have uh, automatic irrigation controllers that adjust for weather to be thinking about how much water your landscape really needs if it's cool and it's wet versus when it's hot, it's dry. Um, and then of course, uh, for purposes of washing outside, we do encourage folks to you know, use brooms first to the extent those work. Um, uh, the SFPUC also has a program to issue permits to mobile washers. And that means that they're following sustainable practices. Um, and we have information about that. And then if you do use hoses, make sure that they have a shut off nozzle so that they're not just running continuously. Uh, next slide, please. So we also have a number of um, tools to help folks uh, understand and use water wisely. Uh, the SFPC was one of the first large water utilities in California to have fully automated water meters. And so this is really terrific. It enables us to get and provide customers daily and hourly water use data and create a number of assistance tools. So uh, one of them is an online platform called My Account. Um, if you are a customer of the SFPUC, you can register for this. And on it, um, this the little screenshot on the top right is, is just an image of the home page of the My Account platform. Um, but it allows customers to do some account services. They can pay bills, stop service, change information in their profile. Uh, they can see their bill, they can see past bills. Um, and then uh, the portion that's really uh, pertinent to conservation, there's a water use section. So they can look at either their monthly water use, uh, look at it by week, look at it by day, and look at it by hour. So that can really help folks get a sense of uh, what's normal for their property. Um, it, or is there some kind of unusual spike if it's usually this amount and suddenly it jumps up? It also can help tell them if they have constant usage, which in some properties, particularly single family homes and smaller residential homes and smaller commercial homes probably means there's a leak. Um, so if they can see on their hourly usage that it never goes to zero, meaning there's just constant 24 seven water use, it probably uh, signifies problem. Um, because we have the automated uh, meter data, we have been able to develop a leak alert program. And so we've been uh, doing this since 2015. And basically uh, any customer of ours is uh, subject to it. It's a courtesy program that we um, run. So for 
single family and small multifamily properties, if they have three days of 24 seven water use uh, over seven and a half gallons, we will automatically notify them. And we'll notify them by every form of contact information uh, we have available for them in our building system. So uh, we'll email them, we'll send a text message, uh, we'll mail a letter, uh, we'll send a phone call. Uh, we do encourage folks who are our customers to really register for my account where they can update their contact information and in particular uh, have a valid email on file with us because you know, we hear over and over from our customers that getting these kinds of alerts by email are the most useful for them because it's timely. Um, so again, just a plug there. If you are a customer and you haven't registered for my account, uh, please do so and update your, your uh, contact information. But we know we've done a lot of analysis of our leak alert program, which we're expanding um, in just a few weeks to include all size multifamily buildings and all commercial non-residential buildings in San Francisco. So basically all buildings in our system will be covered. Uh, but we've heard from our customers that uh, these are very helpful. They didn't know they had a problem until they got um, the notice. Uh, we also through our customer service bureau do have a leak adjustment program um, for customers who end up uh, potentially getting a high bill or think they're going to get a high bill because they had a leak um, if they fix the leak and can show proof of fixing it. So um, quite a number of customers have taken advantage of that and been able to avoid you know, the impact of the high cost from constant usage. We have home and business efficiency checklists. So these are handy uh, for folks who may not have an account and may not be able to log onto my account. Um, they're up on our website. Um, uh, and I'll have again, a link for where people can find those, uh, but they can really help. Um, it's a simple way to check how efficient am I? What key things could I do? We also have available uh, plumbing and leak guides. Uh, our leak guide in particular uh, can help somebody walk through if they're trying to figure out what to check, what to fix. Um, and we have do-it-yourself gray water and gardening guidebooks. So we have a tremendous number of resources um, under the sfpuc.org backslash save water pages, which um, I'll have up on the screen on my last slide. And we, uh, for folks who don't necessarily want to start by looking around at um, all of these materials, uh, for our customers or water users in our retail service area, we do provide free uh, virtual and on-site conservation evaluations. And we've had thousands and thousands of customers from single family homes to large uh, commercial facilities uh, participate in these over the years. Um, Currently, due to COVID for indoor evaluations, we are doing those virtually, but they can be very helpful in helping customers figure out uh, how could they increase their efficiency? How can they find leaks? Uh, what do they need to do? Um, and we are doing on-site in-person evaluations for landscapes. Uh, so for those, we will come out on-site, uh, look and check irrigation systems, check plantings, um, provide a report of our findings that include recommendations for everything from how to adjust your irrigation scheduling to make it more efficient to uh, identifying possible leaks in the irrigation equipment. Um, next slide, please. So uh, we have we have a lot of conservation assistance available to folks in our, our retail service area. Um, uh, we provide free uh, water saving devices. These include shower heads, aerators, toilet flappers, leak detection tablets, and some other basic toilet repair parts. Um, so right now, because our headquarters is still closed, we, we did provide these free over our customer service counter, and we will again when we reopen. But now if folks um, schedule a phone consultation with us, uh, we can identify which devices that uh, they may be eligible for. 
and our field technicians will actually deliver them uh, to those homes and businesses. We have um, the second bullet here is the ever popular free toilet replacement program. Um, and I do wanna give a shout out to my colleague, Deb Chilvers, who I know joined today's meeting as a participant. She manages this. Um, and we provide free toilets plus free installation through licensed plumber uh, for residential properties that have old toilets. Generally, that means they're gonna be 20 years old or older. Uh, that have a rated flush volume of three and a half gallons or more. And it's entirely free. Uh, we put in water efficient toilets uh, for multifamily buildings that have lots of toilets. We'll do all the toilets that are eligible. So it's not just a single toilet. Um, so the link here uh, will provide more information and how folks can apply. And it will include a free uh, evaluation too. So in addition to getting the benefit of the toilet, if, if the toilets are eligible, uh, the folks who participate will also get the nice water-wise evaluation that we offer. We offer rebates um, for uh, uh, folks to replace residential style washers. That's up to $100 uh, for putting in a water efficient uh, front loading washer. We provide those for coin operated uh, washing machines too that you may find in the common areas of multifamily buildings or in laundromats and the coin operated uh, rebates are up to $500. We have discounts for uh, installing rain barrels or larger cisterns that catch rainwater when it rains uh, that can then be used for outdoor irrigation or outdoor washing and we have discounts for uh, single family and small multifamily properties to, uh, if they want to use the water from their washing machine uh, to uh, water irrigation in their gardens. Um, so we have kits and guidance um, and assistance with that. Then for larger landscapes, um, we have uh, a lot of technical assistance we provide where we'll again come out um, and do very in-depth evaluations, provide reports as well as grants. So for large landscapes over 10,000 square feet that have an identified um, improvement project uh, that will save water, we offer very uh, substantial grants. And we have grants too for uh, smaller community gardens that um, uh, organizations uh, may wanna develop to provide an educational opportunity to the public or to grow food. So we have grants there that uh, basically make it free to be able to put in the meter that provides the water. And then we have a whole host of uh, virtual gardening classes and other workshops. Um, next slide, please. So the SFPUC also provides rate assistance. We recognize that um, I, paying for water and sewer and power can be hard for folks and particularly uh, in this last year with the impacts of COVID uh, on the, and the economy. So uh, we provide um, for water and sewer assistance. Uh, we have an ongoing program called our community assistance program, uh, which will uh, provide qualifying customers uh, who meet income guidelines, a 50% uh, discount on their water rate and 30% on their sewer. We implemented during COVID emergency rate assistance, and that has been extended to March 2022. Um, and that also provides a discount off the water and the sewer for small businesses, uh, for residential properties, as well as small businesses and nonprofits. And then we have uh, some other uh, discounts for customers who are in our clean power program. Um, as well as uh, who get power through our Hetch Hetchy um, uh, power program. And next slide, please. All right, well, this is my last slide. Uh, so uh, for more information about the various programs that I mentioned, um, a real good starting place is sfpuc.org backslash save water. Or you can also email um, our conservation section or, or myself, uh, or phone us if you're not really sure where to start um, or you just have some questions. 
And for the rate assistance information that I just went over, uh, the link below sfpuc.org backslash accounts uh, will lead you to all of those various programs. So that concludes my presentation and I'm looking forward to questions and discussion. Julie, thank you so very much. This was absolutely comprehensive. And for our attendees uh, who are probably frantically taking notes, I, I want to assure them that by day's end today, uh, they will have not only the recording link to this uh, presentation, which will also live archivally on the San Francisco Interfaith Council website, uh, but also we will be including resource links as, as Julie mentioned. And uh, we encourage you to share this uh, with your congregation uh, and just in terms of uh, being able to impart this information to them, which I think is going to be uh, helping them to be better stewards of the environment. Julie, as I mentioned to you in our discussions previously, we have invited two remarkable panelists uh, to, uh, to join us today. The first is the Reverend Canon Sally Bingham, who is the founder and president emeritus of the Regeneration Project and Interfaith Power and Light. I have known Sally for a very, very long time. Uh, and she has been an amazing partner. Uh, you know, she, her presence here also is a reminder that in addition to the congregations and other religious institutions uh, in San Francisco, that there are a number of, uh, of nonprofits that drill down uh, and are interfaith on particular issues, single issues. And her passion, uh, which she has expressed through Interfaith Power and Light, uh, is, is the environment, climate change, and, and, uh, and assisting congregations in, uh, in being better stewards of the environment. Uh, I've asked Sally today to, to ground us theologically, but also to, to share with us what congregations are doing uh, to conserve water. And so hopefully uh, a new partnership with the PUC will emerge as a result of her presentation. Sally, Reverend Sally Bingham, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michael Pappas. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning and all of you. And thanks for the opportunity to bring forward the fact that water conservation and the drought situation is really a religious issue. And for people of faith to understand that there are so many people in this world, around the world, who have no water at all. And knowing that and knowing that all of our religious traditions call for caring for one another. And in many, many cases, in fact, I think most religions have purification and cleansing rituals around the use of water. And Andy Galvin spoke earlier about the spiritual component of water use. And I think that's very important. And, and I, I, I believe that we have an well, more than an opportunity, we have a responsibility to care for creation. God put Adam in the garden to till it and to keep it. And we are the gardeners. Now that calls us to be good stewards of water, of plants and of each other. And the, all of the creation is part of um, this conservation effort. And um, when we think about clean pure water. We're very lucky in this country and particularly in San Francisco to have access to that. But there are billions of people around the world who have no access to clean water, which should remind us that we as a rather privileged community need to be taking care of others and our neighbors. That means we don't waste water. It means we don't um, overuse. It means we are careful. We don't take it for granted. And like any other gift from God, we have to be grateful for the fact that we have water. And as you all know, water is life. Nothing can survive without water. 75% of the earth's surface is water. And 70% of our bodies are water. And 
what we can as religious leaders do for uh, the people in our pews is remind folks of what a precious commodity water is. And God provided the sacred gift and it's necessary for all life. We're called to care for all of creation and to love one another. So obeying that commandment means we don't waste and we don't take more than we need. So I believe that religious people have a real moral obligation to be leaders on caring for water and water conservation. When we started the Interfaith Power and Light program, it was about climate change, fossil fuels, and energy efficiency. We can use that same model for having our congregations and people in our pews practice efficiency, and we can have our congregations serve as examples for the community. What, what we did with the energy was congregations would put in um, compact fluorescent light bulbs and their electrical bill would go down and then people would go home and do it in their homes. If our congregations can, as Julie talked about, find all those leaks, put in low flow toilets, put in the um, uh, rain barrels, get drought resistant landscaping and repair these leaky faucets. And in many cases, we need to get rid of the lawns. We don't need to have all these lawns and water the lawns. We can put in indigenous plants and um, native, native plants that don't need a lot of water. And what we, we do have congregations that have done extraordinary things to save water. We have a program where we give out awards. The California Interfaith Power and Light Program gives awards to energy efficient congregations and in some cases to people that have saved water. And then we keep track of what have they done to save water and how are they teaching the people in the pews. Some of the things they've done are the things that Julie was talking about. And the SFPUC, I hope I'm right about this, but I had it done at my own house. They will come and do an audit of your congregation and they'll show you where things are leaking. And they'll show you if you have a over 20 year old toilet that can be replaced for free. So these are all things that we could be doing in our congregations that will help save water and respond to the fact that 41 counties in California are in an energy disaster, drought disaster. I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to leave you with one thought. And that is that if, if you imagine or try to imagine yourself not having access to clean water. There are many, 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 I mean, I think there's a billion people around the world that do not have access to clean water. Now that statement in itself tells religious people that we have to rethink how we use water, whether or not we waste it, do we share it? Do we take more than we need? When we know that there are people around the world who have no water at all, it should voluntarily change our habits and help us to be better conservers of water. And this disaster with the drought um, is frightening. And, and I think that it's something we all need to take um, real, pay real attention to. And that as religious leaders, talk about it in our congregations and get our congregations up to speed. And, and I mean by that, become water efficient and help train folks that they can go home and do those same things in their homes. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Reverend Bingham. This has been a, a great reminder to those of us who are in religious life of not only our obligation, uh, but what, we inherently, our theology teaches us. So we thank you uh, very, very much. Uh, I would like to move on very quickly to uh, our, our second panelist, Susan Liao, who I first heard over a decade ago, at, uh, probably a dozen years ago at the, the chapel at the Presidio, who, who gave a very compelling presentation on water conservation. 
Uh, Susan Liao uh, is a principal, is the principal at Urban Water Works, and is also an associate at Harvard University School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Uh, and we've asked uh, Susan, Julie, to engage you a little bit. Uh, I know that the two of you know one another, uh, colleagues in these fields uh, normally do, uh, but Susan, the floor is yours. Great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. And uh, I really want to start off by thanking Julie um, uh, for a very good presentation. And of course, Michael uh, for inviting me and um, my good and old friend, uh, uh, known forever, and uh, Rita Semmel uh, for inviting me today. And Sally, thank you for your inspirational words, how, how water truly is life. Uh, and we have a, a, a sacred obligation to protect it. Uh, Julie, you gave a very uh, thorough presentation. It's, it was, it's, Julie and I, uh, we, we, uh, she works for the PUC. I used to work with Julie um, at the PUC and uh, they've done uh, amazing work in, in, in protecting uh, that wonderful uh, resource that provides water to 2.7 million people in the Bay Area. And uh, Julie, no, no, uh, no, well, I guess it is a pun in that you, you gave us a, a, a fire hose full of information. I mean, you just came at us with a lot of information, which was great stuff. But um, persons like yourself, and myself that have, that are in the water business and and study and 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 uh, really pay attention to water, um, um, uh, that was a lot of information you gave. How do I? If I was someone listening to this program, if I was someone who leads a congregation, or I'm one of the congregants that I've tuned into this recording. What would be, how, how do I, how do I, wh what's, what's the first few things that I would maybe, how to get some instructional information? Uh, that's number one. And number two is, um, are there some links I can go to get more instructional information to get through all that information you gave us, which was great information. And if there was one thing I was gonna do to conserve, what would be, what, what would that be? Thanks, Susan. Um, yeah, I, I know I did throw a lot of information out there. Great stuff, but, great stuff. <laughs> um, I would suggest that uh, folks go and visit our website, um, sfpuc.org, save water. And that link was provided. And that is a good landing place for finding out about our various conservation assistance programs, as well as the resources we have, um, including the home or business checklists or checklists to figure out if you're water efficient or not and tips. Um, so on, we have a guides and a publication section. And really, I guess I would encourage folks to go there and take a look at those resources. Um, they can also, as I said, uh, if they're in our retail service area, just email or call us if they really don't know where to start and don't know that they want to look at these materials, but just don't have an idea whether their home or business or property is efficient. So we do encourage that. Um, I you know, you bring up a really good point, Susan. We don't have a single great <laughs> overview instructional video. And after you just mentioned it, I'm thinking, I think we need to create that so that when uh, people go, they can just listen to a brief um, uh, overview like that, that really directs them. So that's, that's good advice. Um, but in terms of the single thing, if I had to boil it down to one thing, um, people uh, should do to try to improve efficiency, it would really be to um, check and fix leaks, particularly in their toilets. Again, all properties have toilets. Toilets tend to be the number one um, culprit for, for usage. So 
if you hear it running when it's not supposed to be running, like the middle of the night, if you've got to jiggle the handle a bunch of times to make it flush, um, uh, if it just isn't quite working the way it used to, those are probably all signals that uh, it may be uh, either time to replace it or just time to make some simple fixes. And and you will you'll provide the SFPUC. You'll provide the um, the resources if someone can't afford it um, to to do a either repair or replacement. Yeah, absolutely. For um, they have to be a customer within our retail service area. But if their toilet is old, and again, that's generally going to be twenty years or older, um, we will replace it for free. Wow. If it's not old, um, we still offer, um, we can offer guidance on how to fix the leaks if it has a leak and we do offer free um, replacement parts. So, so that, yeah, yeah. Anyone can take advantage of that. Yeah, any, anybody who's an, an account holder or served by an account holder in our uh, service area can apply. And I did have a link there. Again, that's our free toilet replacement program. Um, and it can be for an entire multifamily building, not just a single family home. Okay. And to, to manage expectations, if, if someone emails, if I email in, uh, and I say, you know, I've got a problem with a leak, when can I expect a response back? What's, what's reasonable, uh, two or three days or what's the normal response? Yeah, time? we do try to respond within a couple of days, um, and, you know, to reach out and determine, again, as I mentioned, because of COVID, um, we are currently doing our indoor evaluations by phone, or we'll also do it by video chat, uh, depending on, you know, if the, the person requesting it's comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, but we generally try to get those scheduled within a couple of days of receiving a contact, particularly if somebody has a leak and it sounds urgent. Okay, and I was I was very pleased to hear that you had a, uh, a rate payer assistance, and yes. how how can how can you do that? Um, because I had always heard that that rate payer money, um, it, it's tough to it, it's there's been uh, issues about providing rate payer assistance with rate payer dollars. Um, so how how are you able to do that? Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good question. There, there are these uh, rules around using our water utility ratepayer uh, funds uh, for things that aren't directly for those customers. But um, so we, first of all, we do uh, project the cost of our ratepayer assistance programs, um, and we model for those in our financial plans, um, and they don't violate any financial policies. Um, that being said, we are in the process of seeking some additional funding. This is in particular for our emergency COVID uh, rate discount programs. We're seeking funding from nonprofits, foundations, and federal COVID-related relief. But we also get funding um, partially provided by the San Francisco City General Fund. And American. we have a partnership with American Water Resources, um, which is a very, very large insurance company that provides um, insurance for water and sewer laterals. And so the payments from that um, help offset the cost of those rate discount programs. Great. And we actually get donations from some customers. Um, wow, great, great. Yeah. So uh, as, as a longtime, uh, well, native San Franciscan and, and, and longtime customer, please customer, um, I, I say to myself, wait a minute, I've already conserved. I'm using a lot less already. How can I how can I use even less than I'm using now? Um, and I know you're it's a 10% voluntary, but we've got to do that voluntary because we never know what the next year is going to bring. And um, so, you know, it's sort of like I've already done it. What what more can I do, Julie? Well, I would say kudos <laughs> and uh, congratulations. And, you know, I extend that to all of our many customers who are very, very water efficient. So, you know, we really, the message for 
folks like that, if you've done everything, you've replaced all the old fixtures in your property, you check for leaks. If you have landscape, you, you are conscientious of um, you know, irrigating it uh, efficiently, then, um, and you, you've explored use of gray water or rainwater, then I would say just keep up the good work. I mean, we are not asking people to take real sacrificial steps that would impact the quality of their life, uh, you know, by reducing their shower to two minutes or something like that. So, you know, the, the message for folks, Susan, like yourself and uh, all the other all the others who have taken many, many water efficiency steps and are water efficient is keep it up. That's great. Um, when I said there's room to save, you know, we do still have room. There are still folks who have water waste, um, haven't done those actions. And so those are really the people and the places that we're trying to reach out to and, and to serve. But, you know, I do just want to add, because I know during the last drought, I got some calls from folks who, I mean, people really, really take these messages and, and um, act on them. And we really appreciate it. But I heard from folks who were really stressed. They had they already were very efficient. They cut down, they couldn't do anymore, but they felt like they needed to. And so, you know, I really wanted to let them know that's great. You are doing your part. Um, you don't necessarily need to go above and beyond that. I mean, again, our average per person daily usage and residential daily usage in San Francisco for indoor and outdoor is about 42 gallons a person a day. And that's about half of the state average. And that doesn't mean every home is doing that. So I put that number out. So if, if you, in your home, if yours is way above that, then you could get an idea, okay, I could maybe bring it down closer to the average. Um, but again, folks who are already there or even below that, um, they just need to keep up the good work. Okay. I think you've given us a great uh, direction um, I think everybody should go to sfpuc.org. They've got the tools there. Um, it sounds like you can email folks and expect a response. Um, so we never know what the next year is going to be bring. It's a very precious resource, as Sally mentioned. And we know that with climate change, this is going to be, this is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. So thank you, Michael, uh, Rita. Um, just happy to participate. Thank you. Susan, thank you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your last question um, because I think that those people who really are passionate about this and, and, and have taken all the steps, they're the ones that really need to contact Sally Bingham and they're the, the, real, the ones and, and Interfaith Power and Light and they're the ones that need to contact their congregation leaders and, and really work within the congregation to help other people uh, get to that level and, and to help the congregation itself and its facilities to get to that level as well. And I, I, I'm guessing, Sally, that, the, uh, that Interfaith Power and Light would welcome uh, inquiries like that from congregation leaders and from people passionate about this. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, we, we, we're we at the hour now um, and a little beyond, but I mean, I know we could be speaking about this a lot longer. I wanna thank you, Julie, uh, for the time, the preparation and the passion that you've brought to this. Uh, uh, consider yourself a friend of the San Francisco Interfaith Council. Uh, to Sally and Susan, thank you so much for, for what you have lent to this along with our dear Andy Galvin and Rita Semmel. Um, we are blessed to have you all as part of our greater interfaith family. Um, Want to also uh, thank uh, Cynthia Zambukas, uh, uh, the Interfaith Council's uh, Program Administrative Associate for all she's done to make these 50 uh, programs and briefings that we've uh, offered uh, as informative and efficient as they've been, as well as to our friends uh, John McKnight and Elise Karawala and Sharon Walton at the uh, at the COVID Command Center's Joint Information Center virtual outreach team. Next week's uh, program is gonna have a little different format. Um, we are going to, it will take the form of a vaccine confidence training. Uh, it will be more interactive. And the intent is to provide congregation leaders with the confidence they need to engage their congregants on this very timely and important issue 
uh, for the betterment of all of us. So uh, we encourage you and those of you who are on here uh, to, to reach out to those in your congregations uh, who and your leaders uh, who really ought to be on this call. As we bring this to a close, I also would like to, uh, to offer greetings to our Muslim sisters and brothers uh, who today uh, celebrate the Feast of Eid, which is the close of a month of fasting and prayer and, uh, and reflection and good works uh, as, as Ramadan comes to a close. Uh, I pray that it's been a blessed season for all of them. This brings our, our program to a conclusion and uh, we will be sending out all of those resource links so nobody can say they didn't get them by day's end along with the recording. Um, and we look forward to having you join us next week. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Goodbye. Bye.